What's going on guys? Today we're checking out a very awesome Move Love kit here from Kotobukiya. This is the Typhoon Cerberus Platoon type. It's got a massive rifle there as you can see and a lot of really cool weapons and just overall is a really fantastic kit I have to say. Very much looking forward to sharing this one with you guys. I can highly recommend it. Let's go ahead and get right into the review. Alright guys, so starting off taking a look at the box and then we'll get into its contents and everything but some really cool box art here on the front featuring the Cerberus there just in a cool kind of action pose with that very long gun that it's got and the pilot down there at the bottom as well. Going around here onto the bottom of the box you can get a sense of how deep the box is so it's got a lot of stuff in here. This is non-scale but I think the size of these is generally roughly about the size of a 100 scale like a Bandai Master Grade style kit. On this side of the box you got a front and back view what that's going to look like obviously when it's all painted up and everything. And then over here, a look at just kind of everything that's included. It's kind of all the stuff that ends up getting attached onto there, all your hand option parts and everything. And a look at a couple of action poses here. It can even lay down with that sniper rifle. On the opposite side of the box, we've got a look at the water side decal sheets, a kind of close up image there. Another image of the kit, I believe this would be an unpainted sample image of that there. And over here we got the list price of 5,800 yen for this. So at the current conversion rate, I don't know, it's probably around 50 bucks. Not too bad because like I said, it's a pretty thick box. And we'll get to all of these runners here in just a moment. Obviously it's going to be mostly just different shades of gray. First off, let's take a quick look at the manual, which features the same artwork that we saw on the front of the box, just now with a black background instead of white. We just got the logo there on the back. On the inside, some cool information and illustrations here. Those are nice, just detailed illustrations front and back. A little bit about the character down there, the pilot. More and more illustrations of the weapons and equipment and everything. Next page is just going to be our parts list here and then we're just right on into the construction. So once we get to the back of that, it's just the end of the construction, how to use the weapons and gimmicks and everything, how to mount everything. Then we've got our color guide and our decal guide will be here as well. But like I said, the colors should be pretty straightforward. It's actually more of kind of very purplish than gray, but I don't think that the runners are quite as purplish looking. We'll see on those just a second, but some cool reference images there for you. So first up, there's just a quick look at that water slide decal sheet. It looks pretty nice just for a couple of major markings on there. We've got our face part right here, which has like the visor and so it's like a black and like a metallic blue green kind of pre-printed on there. That looks really cool. A PC runner here in black for some polycaps. The runners A, B, C, and D are going to be all of our armor pieces in this slightly lavender kind of light gray color. There's A and B we have one each of those runners C and D we have two each of these and there is a lot of really nice detail on these armor pieces so you can see once you have this like painted or at least just panel lined up it's gonna bring out all the nice details on there it's gonna look really cool runner E here in a warm medium gray color is gonna be some of our weapons parts there it looks like runner F gonna be some kind of joint parts there and then runner G in that same color is some more weapons and equipment type parts there it looks like runner H here is in clear blue runner I we've got two of these for some some joint parts in black. A few more of those here on runner J as well. Runner K has a couple of little accent parts here in a very nice lavender color. And then lastly runner L we've got two of for some weapons parts here in a kind of purplish darker gray color. All right guys, so here is the kit all built up and I have to say I am very, very impressed with this kit. Having only experienced the 144 scale Mubble Love kits in the past, this is my first time building one of the non-scale kits, which is kind of, I guess, would be similar to one 100 scale, I guess, but they're labeled non-scale technically. And I can tell you guys, it's definitely a much better experience and makes for a really, really nice kit. I have to say, really impressed with this one. It looks great. It's got a really nice set of weapons and accessories in here as well too. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. And to start off, we have a number of different hand options. We've got closed fit, you've got open hands and then we've got two different types of holding hands for the left and the right side one of the weapon holding hands has the wrist bent back like that and the other type has the wrist bent down like so so depending on which type of weapon you're holding however you might want to hold that you can use whichever holding hand would work the best for you and then coming in at nearly 23 centimeters in length its main weapon is the mark 57 company support cannon it's a very large and a long weapon here very cool no color separation, it's all molded in one color, but as you can see, there's a lot of detail on there. The handle here on the top will move up and down for a two-handed grip. The bipod in the front, those can extend down. You can then separate those out 
for using that if you want to. And then we have its two really long blade axe type weapons here. These are 14 centimeters in length, so these are also quite long. These can be stored on the kit using these attachment pieces, which those will just slot into like that. And those can plug right in here into the top of the torso at the back. And then with the articulation built into these, you can angle that forward and then this whole section also slides forward like that. So you can have that up and slid forward so that, you know, in theory it would reach up and then grab that off the rack in the back. And then we have its pair of assault rifles. So this one you also have two of, no stickers or anything for the camera, but really nice design on this one. Again, it's all molded in one color, but a really cool design with a lot of detail on there. This also comes with a rack attachment piece here that you can just plug that onto that. And this will plug into the back of the torso in the same way. Now this one, instead of moving up over the top, this one actually extends down, but it doesn't actually have that movement built into this. So you have to do a little bit of a part swap here with this. So you're gonna take this part off of here and then plug this into that. This part, which is holding the top of the rifle, will then just slot a little bit into there. It doesn't slide all the way back because this is made to look like it's deploying out of there. Now it's a little bit loose in this connection right here. Once you have that plugged into place, you can see what that's going to do is deploy the rifle right under the arm so that the mecha can just grab it straight away. Really cool and interesting design for that. Just interesting how that's designed in a very realistic and you know lo logical way for how the weapons are deployed. Now just taking a bit of a closer look, all the clear blue parts on here look really nice there and there and up here in the torso and in the head, that pre-printed part there for the eyes, that metallic blue. Looks really nice there on the head. So the articulation of the head has a double joint, so it'll be able to go up all the way to there, which is not too bad at all. Looks quite nice. Down all the way to there and any other which way you might want it to go. The shoulder joint will swing out to the front like that, as you can see. So you should be able to get a nice far reach across the front of the body. And this big giant shoulder armor can move up on its own like that. And also these little gray flaps at the bottom can move in and out if you need to get those out of the way. And it seems like ultimately you can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees. That seems to be about the extent of the upper movement of the arm there, but then you have some rotation at the top. Double joint in the elbow is gonna give you a pretty far bend for that, more than 90 degrees. That's about the extent of that. And then the wrist joint has a hinge moving in and out like so. And the hand itself is on a little ball joint there, but basically you're just gonna be able to turn it. The other cool thing you can do here on the arms, this blade here on the side will move forward and back ever so slightly for using that as a melee weapon as well. Very cool. In the stomach section, you have a really nice ab crunch forward and back. So nice articulation there. Also side to side quite a bit. And then rotation in the middle section there as well. For a kind of skirt armor, I guess we can call it, is this section here above the hips. That will move up and down in case you need to get that out of the way, basically for bringing the leg up to the front, which is quite useful. Around here at the back, where the jump units are plugged into right here, that's a fixed part, and there's a ball joint in there, and then a hinge here, so you can turn and rotate, adjust the angle of the jump units here on this one. I really like how for this particular model that the jump units look like kind of a modern day fighter jet. It looks pretty cool. That said, that ball joint in there is really tight, so it was really difficult to get this part pushed into there, and it's pretty tight moving these around, which is good because these are kind of heavy out the back and so you don't want them to be like sagging or drooping down, but just be careful with that that you don't want to break anything. But as I mentioned, you can bring the leg up to about 90 degrees. That's pretty nice. The double joint here in the knee is going to separate that knee armor. And then to bend the knee the rest of the way, there's this part here, which is the armor piece on the back of the thigh. You need to kind of move that manually. It works just kind of easier to move that by yourself separately, get that out of the way, because then when you bend the leg, all the way like that, that armor piece on the back of the knee, kind of the back of the thigh, go, moves all the way back around there like that for a pretty nice full bend here. Nice separation of that knee armor. You got that little piece of armor inside there and then the purple parts set in the black parts in the frame is really nice. And you have that down here at the ankles as well. And speaking of those, you got some movement forward back here up kind of like the middle of the lower leg, which is kind of interesting. And then you have some more movement here down at the actual foot. No toe bend here for this, but you, as you can see, you can move the foot forward and back kind of plenty there. And then we have two joints for moving side to side, one which is further up and then one which is kind of like at the foot connection for moving this ankle side to side so you can get a very wide stance without any issue for this. And let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples of that right now. So just because of the stuff mounted on the back, it is a little bit back heavy, so you are able to pose it just fine without having this on a stand. But just do be aware that for some poses, you might run into some balance issues with this kit. That said, if you do need to put it on the stand, there is an attachment point at the back of the hips. There's just a little part that you need to just pop off, and that reveals the three millimeter holder that you can use to plug that onto any sort of kodobuki 
Nokia flying base or Bandai action base, whatever you might want to use for this. But I gotta say guys, like I mentioned at the start of the review portion, I'm really impressed with this kit and it's definitely making me want to try out some more Muv Love kits. I was at the point, I had built a couple of the 1 in 44 scale kits and they were just kind of okay. They were a little bit finicky and there was a lot of seam lines and I should say there's a lot of seam lines on this kit as well. But I don't really mind that so much about this kit, but I was at the point where I kind of didn't really want to try any more Muv Love kits because I was just not that really impressed by the 1 in 44 scale ones. But I'm really glad that I finally built one of the larger kits because man it's just so much better so I can highly highly recommend it to you guys uh, if you guys are interested in this design and there's a lot of different designs in this series Kotobuki makes quite a lot of these so I would highly recommend them that said if you are wanting to save a little bit money or save a little bit of space trying out one of the 1 in 44 scale ones uh, they're not bad kits by any means it's just that in my personal opinion what I would say after building having building both now I do highly recommend the uh, non-scale ones, the larger ones. I can say they're definitely much better. But that's not to say that the 1 in 44 scale ones are bad. It's just gonna be my recommendation to you guys. But if you're wanting to try out something different, you love building mecha models, maybe you're tired of building kind of the same sort of thing over and over again, you wanna try something a little bit more different, a little bit unique, I gotta say, give these Muv Love kits a try. Definitely worth trying out. Really cool designs, really cool weapons, really cool way that it utilizes the weapons as well, how they're mounted and stored and deployed there on the backpack. It's very cool. So if you wanna check them out, check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store. We've got a bunch of these and also tools, paints, supplies, everything you guys need right down there in the video description. Check out USA Gundam Store. And thank you guys so much for checking out the video today. If you'd also like to like and or subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, hope you all are having a great day and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.